So on behalf of the Independence Chamber of Commerce and the City of Independence, welcome to First Friday. If you were not at Celebrate Independence yesterday, you missed out. There were at least 70 people in the room and we had great, great um, presenters and, um, and it was a great event. So if you weren't there, I encourage you to remember that we do that on a quarterly basis um, on a Thursday at a luncheon and you're all welcome to come. It's open to the public, so um, watch for that and it will be on your community calendars in the upcoming months. So. Before we hear from our great speakers this morning, um, we are going to hear from our business sponsors. Um, they are the offices of Edward Jones, the office of Greg Webster and Gavin Webster, and the office of Jason Rutledge. As our business sponsor, Edward Jones paid for our great breakfast, as always, from Annie Mae's. So please enjoy the muffins, fruit, and hot coffee over there. And um, at this time, would you please welcome the mighty trio, Jason Rutledge, Greg Webster and Gavin Webster. Is this on? Everybody hear me? So, well, uh, on behalf of Jason and Gavin and myself, uh, first we want to thank the Chamber for allowing us to be the sponsor this morning. So, but also more importantly, we want to thank you. Um, and we appreciate all the support. Um, I can speak for Jason and Gavin saying we are truly blessed to be able to build a business and raise a family in Independence, Kansas, so, and to work with people like yourself. So we're here today to say thank you for everything you do, and we appreciate being able to work with you. Um, just real quickly, a little bit about Edward Jones. We're obviously a national financial firm. Um, we have over 16,000 financial advisors, which, by the way, is the, we are the largest financial firm in the United States when in terms of financial advisors. So um, we're real proud of that. Um, our mission is to help the long-term investor meet their financial goals, whether that be preparing for the unexpected, life insurance, long-term care, whether that be um, helping people raise for education, or preparing or living in retirement. So those are our goals, and we're here to kind of promote the fact that we are the national sponsor for the Alzheimer's event, because um, obviously that disease can drastically affect uh, people's financial goals. So um, we think we're a great partner to do that. And so we're here to kind of help promote that. So yeah, Jace, or, uh, Edward Jones on a national scale is able to affect um, Alzheimer's in a positive way. Other companies, uh, corporations, foundations, um, they have deeper pockets. They're able to have advertising and donate. They can make a difference on that national scale. But those of us in this room and Independence and Montgomery County, we also can make a difference. And so 15 days from now, Saturday, the 22nd, 9 o'clock is registration, 10 o'clock is the event, and 1030, we walk to end Alzheimer's. You don't have to come. You don't have to donate. You don't have to do anything. But we think if you did, we're all in this together, that it would be a good thing. So before I give the mic to Gavin, I want to introduce Sarah McNay. She's from Wichita. She's in charge of the Alzheimer's Walk. Thank you, Sarah, for coming here. We appreciate you. And then also my staff, Teresa Lewis and Tony Camacho. And in our office, the, the spearheads of this are Lauren Yususi and Dana Clapp. They're your go-to gals for all the info. And so, so far we have seven teams, 53 walkers, and about $6,700 or a little bit more raised so far for our walk. We still have some room to grow for our goal, um, but we're on a good track. Uh, with that being said, we want you guys to join us in this fight. So whether you want to donate or walk, today we are matching up to the first $500 of what's donated today. And when you do donate, you're going to get your name put in a drawing over there for a new pair of Oakley sunglasses. So even more of a reason to do it. Yeah. There they go, yeah. That's what they look like. So to sign up, you can see one of us afterwards. You can stop by one of the branches, or you can register the day of that morning. So again, we want to raise as much money as we can, but I think it'd be even cooler to get a great group of people there Saturday the 22nd for the walk. So thank you guys again, um, and we'll be around afterwards.
Thank you very much. We appreciate your support. And we, as the chamber, we help organize um, the walked in Alzheimer's as well. And, and uh, I know that I speak uh, for Sarah as well when I say that um, I look forward to the day that we're putting out those white flowers instead of all of those other colored flowers, which means we found a cure for Alzheimer's. So at this time, we have something um, uh, in addition to our regular speakers to take care of this morning. Um, just like last month, and I, I missed last month, but I heard it was amazing. So, um, and we had a little presentation last month as well, and this month is no different. This morning, we have a very special award to present to a very deserving downtown business. At this time, would you please welcome our state representative, Jim Kelly, Craig Van Wy from the Department of Commerce, Tricia Purden, Executive Director from the Montgomery County Action Council, and our City Manager, Craig Whitehead, who will present an award to Brian Height, co-owner of Magnolia Sense by Design. Good morning. We were honored um, this past spring to recognize businesses in Montgomery County that have made a difference in our community and have really contributed to not only um, the community as a whole, but our economy um, for Montgomery County and the state of Kansas. Um, we were honored to learn from uh, Governor Collier that Magnolia Sense by Design was selected as a business of merit for the 2018 Business Appreciation Month. <laughs> Here's your letter from Governor Collier as well, recognizing your efforts. And again, we can't thank you enough for everything you've done. Um, Craig, do you want to say anything about um, this process? Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, every year since 1995, we've recognized the month of June as Business Appreciation Month in the state of Kansas. And as Tricia mentioned, it's an opportunity to recognize the valuable contributions that businesses make to our communities. Not only do they uh, provide jobs to our residents, but they make charitable contributions, and they are involved in a number of uh, or a variety of important causes. So again, it's a way to recognize those businesses that that really contribute sometimes in ways that aren't really seen by all of us, but we do really need to recognize the valuable things that they do for us. <laughs> you want to say anything? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, um, you know, it's, it's very humbling, and it's definitely a, a huge honor to be recognized uh, in this way. Back when we started uh, over a decade ago, I, I had no idea uh, what this thing would become and, uh, and how we, we'd, we would be contributing to... Uh, to our society, and uh, and I'm I've been very blessed and very pleased uh, to discover all of the ways that we can, and so uh, again to be honored in this way is a it's a huge privilege. So thank you very much. Mandy and Ellie, you guys want to come up and take a picture? We'll get them all together. And Kelly. Thank you, thank you. So as I said, First Friday is co-sponsored by the Chamber and the City, and it's a free event, and it's a way for us to share information with the public. And as always, um, we have a great calendar underneath your program that has all kinds of um, information for you to put on your calendars. The, ch the Chamber works hard to um, to be the hub of information for our community. So we work to find new ways to get information out. And I always like to list the ways that we get the information out to the public because we're also videotaping this for TV and we want everyone to know how to know what's happening in Independence. So you can look on our website, you can check out our Facebook page, we have a flyer table for those who like to have something in their hot little hand. Um, we do a WhatsApp every week that goes into um, the newspaper. We also flash that out. We put that on Facebook. That's just a kind of a week at a glance. We do the calendar of events. If there's something missing on that calendar or a correction or something like that, be sure and let us know. We'll get that taken care of. We put table tents with a 
small version of the calendar out at all of our hotels and our restaurants so people coming into the community know what is happening. We do live radio spots in Independence and on the Coffeeville radio stations, and we do a taped community calendar as well. So if, if you don't know what's going on in the community, I need to find out from you how you find out, how you get your information. So, um, and I say that seriously because if, if you find yourself going, I knew nothing about that, I would really like for you to call me and, and let me know how you get your information, and then I will work to get it out um, to that, um, that area as well. So, and with that, let's look at our calendar real quick um, and go, few, go through a few things. So we have the Optimus Pancake Feed. That's real important because that's um, their biggest fundraiser every year. It's at the Wesley Center tomorrow from 7 to noon. All the money gets pushed right back out into our community, in particularly to our youth. Their theme is a friend of youth, so be sure and, and um, support the Optimist group. Also on the Saturdays now, at least until the weather is good, we're going to continue to do the Bulldog Walk, and it's um, the Bulldog Pride Walk with a Purpose. We meet at Bulldog Station on West Main, or East Main, and um, at 9 o'clock every Saturday, we're done promptly at 10, and we work to clean up the community. And so we look around at areas that need to be cleaned up, and we get out and we do that. So you get your exercise, and you get to clean up the community. Um, we'll be concentrating on the downtown area the first few Saturdays in October to get it all ready for Niwala in particular. But um, other than that, we'll be breaking up. Sometimes we go out into different neighborhoods. We get in our cars and we go other places. So um, if, um, if you're interested in that, there's um, some flyers over there on the table. Get information. Look on our Facebook page and be a part of that. Um, also, I wanted to point out bingo night is on Monday evenings. Now, I want you to know that um, I went a couple of weeks ago to bingo night, and it was a lot of fun. And when we made some posts on Facebook, I heard someone say, well, it's smoky in there. And they don't smoke in there anymore if that bothers you. And that I didn't even smell any um, hints of that. So if that's something that's kept you from going, don't worry about that. It's a lot of fun. It's a cheap date, and you might even win some, win some money. So um, check out Bingo Night at the VFW and support our VFW, who then support our, our um, uh, service men and women. Um, let's see, we have the Can Oakla 100-mile highway sale. You need to know that because um, the cutoff to get your permits is today at 5 o'clock at the city offices, and then we will be putting together the map. It will go out um, next week for the sale, so if you're having a sale, you need to get ready for that and get your permit. And we have some shout-outs about some other things that are happening, but I do want to point out the Ford Drive for Your Community. That's next weekend as well. That's a way for us to raise money for four paws. All you have to do is show up out at the Oval between 9 and 3 and drive a brand new car. I can't imagine anything more enjoyable on a Saturday than doing that. And for every car that you test drive, or every person that test drives a car, they donate $20 to four paws. So it's a great way for you to do very little work and give to a great cause in our community. So mark that on your calendar. We've got football coming up. Main Street has um, a sipping shop coming up on the 20th. There's a way to get your health in check on the 21st. Um, young professionals have some activities marked on the calendar. You want to check those out. Um, we have downtown movie night the end of this month. So put that on your calendar for the 29th. And the last four things that I'm going to mention would be the community cleanup on October the 6th. That's the one that lasts from 8 to 3. It's not just recycling. That's where you clean up everything. So you get your couch it's off your front porch and your refrigerators out of the basement and your junk out of the closets. And you go and bring it down to 21st and Maple and we clean up our community. So that's important to remember. Um, Trunk or Treat is going to be on, on October 31st on Halloween, and the reason why that's important is because we need trunks. So there's a form over there on the uh, flyer table that if you did a trunk last year and you, or you want to do a trunk this year, um, be sure and get some information to us and get signed up so that we know how many trunks we had. We have over 1,000 kids come to that last year, so um, it was obviously a hit, and we need lots of trunks. The third thing would be the Veterans Day of Honor will be um, on November the 10th, and that's um, Saturday, and we will be having our parade, so we need parade entries, and we also could use some volunteers, so if you want to uh, do a parade entry, please let us know, and if you're willing to volunteer, please let us know. 
And then finally, I just had a call last night from a friend of mine, Judy Doherty, who wanted me to tell you that um, for many, many years, like clear back into the 60s, there's a group that have been playing bridge right here in the Civic Center. And they continue to play um, Tuesday evenings is the Evening Bridge Club at 630. And they're wanting to grow their bridge organization. They want the up and coming new generation of bridge players to join them. And so they invite you to come. You have to bring a partner because it takes two and join them at the Civic Center right here at 630. And Judy's in the room with the green t-shirt right over there. And if you want uh, more information, I'll say Judy's phone number for the TV, 331-0632, or you can just talk to her after First Friday. So with that, we're going to get started because we've got some really good speakers to hear from today. Um, our first speaker is no stranger to First Friday or to Independence. He speaks to us regularly, keeping us abreast of what's happening at the Fab Lab. Um, they are finishing up and they're getting ready for their grand opening, and he's here to tell us all about their expansion. Would you please welcome Jim Carell? Good morning. It's always good to come to this group. Um, I see a few of my colleagues kind of back there in the corner trying to keep a low profile from the college. Val de Fever, the board chair, is over here. You know, the board chair has been really instrumental in the development of the Fab Lab and supportive, um, as has the administration of the college. And there's plenty of colleges in the world that struggle for years to get a Fab Lab going, and that didn't happen with us, and, it's, and that's because of that support we got. So I'm going to go through some things. I think last time I did top ten things, but I might have a few more than that today. But I'm going to go fast. Uh, first of all, for uh, anybody who's kind of new to the community, we opened our doors October 1st of 2014. So the October 1st of our grand opening of the expansion building will also be our fourth birthday. Lots happened in four years. A lot of really great stuff. Um, uh, the new equipment that we purchased when the Fab Lab opened uh, was purchased with a combination of Kauffman Foundation grant monies. Kauffman's a big, big $2 billion foundation in Kansas City that supports entrepreneurship around the world. So we had a, a matching grant donation from them and then um, a local person, two, several local people really, and we used underutilized space in the Cessna Learning Center. Our expansion building grand opening will be October 1st from 12 to 7 p.m., so that's kind of a come and go thing. We'll cut the ribbon at 12.15, so any of you that are available, please feel free to come out for that. Um, w with that expansion building, then our Fab Lab will be nearly 16,000 square feet. And that's pretty good size for a Fab Lab, um, especially in a market our size. So we're pretty sure it's not only the biggest maker space in a, in a community the size of Independence or even a county the size of Montgomery, but we think in markets of 50,000 or less, less is probably as big, as big as there is. We've never heard one with that much uh, space. In the new space, uh, we'll have what we call an entrepreneur's bullpen. That's in the cities, they call it a co-working innovation space, sometimes they say innovation hub, but that'll be a place for um, new business owners and business owners needing a place to work on their businesses while they're uh, getting ready to launch can come in and have the resources of the Fab Lab hooked on and have a relatively quiet place to work while collaborating with each other on ideas. We'll have a 14 by 24 state-of-the-art paint booth and uh, coatings. We'll have multi-process welding stations and then custom electronics and, or custom signal, they're called now, in Chanute uh, donated eight or 10 really nice um, workbenches, lighted workbenches for us. And Corey Hugo's been nice enough to store those for several months, and I know he's ready to get them out of his way, so we're just about ready to take them. We'll have storage lockers for rent so people can bring their supplies and, and, and small projects and not have to take them home with them like they do now. And we'll have a thing called Digital Design Studio, which will house our wide and laser printers and probably our 3D printers. And that will free up um, what we call the studio now, which is a meeting room that will then be able to hold about 50 people. Um, we're open to the public through public membership, so individuals can join for $125 annually and learn to use any of the equipment that we have. We aspire to be a national leader in uh, the way that we combine entrepreneurship with Fab Lab, and that's not totally unique, but it's not common among ma makerspaces and, and Fab Lab. So we have the tools and services for business growth that many small businesses don't have, 
And we're current, we, we currently work with six to eight inventors who are in various stages of bringing new products to market. Our Women for Women program, which was another Kaufman grant, um, in that program headed by Joanne Smith, who's here today, uh, we seek to lower the barriers to women getting into business, whether it's full-time or part-time, and uh, that's ongoing. And we just purchased a van, um, and Romans Motors found that for us. It's a real nice a 2014 cargo van to sort of turn into a mobile fab lab, and we'll use that in conjunction with the Women for Women program, and then also probably make it available to schools so that we could uh, go around and let them experience some of this equipment if they don't have it. Um, our, let's see, next event, oh, this is back to Women for Women. The next Women for Women event is September 27th. That's a Thursday, I believe, 11.30 to 1 out at the Fab Lab, and we're calling that Building Your Online Presence. So we're going to have some people that do online selling and are pretty good at online marketing and social media and that uh, being our speakers and lunch will be provided. So if you are interested in coming to that, especially if you're a woman, I'm not sure we would ban men, but uh, get a hold of me or Joanne. Um, let's see, we believe that every rural community in Kansas should have a fab lab or maker space, and it doesn't have to be 16,000 square feet. We tell people that it can even start out with a couple of pieces of equipment in a local library or some kind of public meeting place that that is already open. and. The kind of thinking that's spurred in a fab lab is really good, and it's not just for business people, it's for everybody, and I'll talk a little more about that later. Um, in fact, in two weeks, 11 people will be coming to the fab lab for, for a two and a half day boot camp. They're coming from around Kansas, and by the way, that's 33 room nights and all the related food for you tourism types in the room. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell them for two and a half days what we did to start Fab Lab, and we're not gonna imply that we knew what we're doing, but some pretty nice things have happened in this four years, and so we're just gonna kinda tell the story of what we did and what's happened as a result of it with the hopes that they'll go home and try to launch some kind of a makerspace or Fab Lab in their town. We provided this summer boot and STEM camp experiences um, and services to about 200 youth. Many of you knew that we had a, a STEM camp, a three week long, day camp, but it was all day every day for, it was nearly 100, but some of them kind of washed out, so to speak, but 92, about around 92 girls finished that, all middle school age, and Joanne could tell you some real stories. She headed that effort too. She could tell you some real stories about that, but the main thing that we were trying to do with that was provide maybe a little bit different picture of what the future could be for some of those girls, and I think we accomplished that. Many of them discovered that they loved math and science, and they, they didn't know that before, and that was thanks to a grant from the Verizon Foundation. They're really interested in doing that. And this is a relatively new program. Only 16 community colleges in the country got to do that this summer, and we were one of them, so we're very fortunate for that. We just launched our first guitar fabrication class, and th this is not fabrication from scratch. This is made really assembly from, from kit. So if you like the idea of putting a guitar together, whether you play or not, people take these classes even if they don't play. They're very popular across the country. And so you get a kit that's got, that got the basic pre-cut wood parts and put it together and all the electronic pickups and the strings and all that stuff. And so in the class, you work on putting that all together and then putting a finish on it and you have a, a high quality, and this time it's a Stratocaster style uh, guitar when it's done. Uh, we are launching our second annual holiday fruit sale. So the Lions Club used to do this and they decided not to, and at the very last minute, which is the way we do a lot of things last Christmas, we put a fruit sale together and had pretty good success. So we're gonna be doing that again. Um, if you can remember this, fablabicc.org, if you go to that website, there's a pre-registration form there and we're asking people to pre-register and then we'll double back with them in the middle of November and, and probably have to order the fruit for Christmas delivery around uh, Thanksgiving time. So our mission, in the beginning our mission at the Fab Lab, we thought we're just gonna show people how to make stuff. But as we got into it, we started to see the psychological benefits of what happens to people when they learn to make stuff, especially when they make stuff that they didn't think they could do. And it's amazing, it's almost magic, and it seems to affect everybody. And so I've got just a few examples of how, um, how that's come about and what we've observed on that. And if you listen carefully, I'm gonna be Mr. Subliminal and I might actually stick a couple of um, identities in there. 
But now we say that our mission is to improve people's self-empowerment. And if we were all a room full of psychologists, then boy, wouldn't that be interesting. If we were all a room of psychologists, we would use the term self-efficacy, but maybe self-empowerment is a little more um, intuitive and self-explanatory. So here we go. So we had a grandmother who didn't think that she could learn to use any of our machines, Charlotte Muse, who actually learned to use the machine and made uh, 50 etched glasses for her granddaughter's wedding reception dinner, I believe that was for. Um, a, college a college athlete that has felt isolated among his friends, really, all of his school life because he aspired for a great life and all his friends were complacent with just the status quo and sitting around and, and doing stuff. So we're involved with him now and he's seeing that he's not alone, that there's other people that think that and that's empowering for him. A market professional, Joanne Smith, launching her own business after losing her job and didn't know for sure what to do, and we did everything we do, could do to twist her arm and encourage her to start, and now I'm not sure she knows how she's going to get all the work done. She, do, she helps us with a lot of our work. She has clients all over the place from here to Pittsburgh, and lots of businesses need the kind of help that she can provide. Um, a cosmetologist, I don't think she's here, but Lindsay Forslund downtown at Reflections, who learned how to make her own sign. So that sign above her awning, she made in the Fab Lab, and all those window vinyls on her window she made. And she almost comes to tears when she describes how she didn't believe that she could do any of that. She said, I know how to do hair, and that's it. But she really learned how to do all that. Not only saved a lot of money, but now she has a satisfaction that she put it up there herself. A developmentally challenged young man that went from an introvert hating to use computers, he wouldn't even use them, and now he's become outgoing and especially when he's on the computers designing his next project, and we help him put those projects together. A gifted student in the Greenbush uh, program, about 13 years old, completing a very challenging project, some projects that would be challenging for adults, but the thing is, when you're working on something that you wanna do, you will learn whatever you need to learn to get it done. Um, and then, this is really cool, a homeschooled 12-year-old kid who has a love of model airplanes and flying, remote control model airplanes. He and his parents came to me and they said, we'd like to put on a class where Jackson, the 12-year-old, teaches whoever wants to build this, how to build airplanes. So we're working on that and I'm, we're helping them plan that. So it might be the first Fab Lab that's ever had a 12-year-old teacher or facilitator, I'm not sure, but we're looking forward to that. A GED graduate, working his way through product development cycle of a new kind of interlocking building block. So that's, that's a GED graduate that finished it out at ICC, and he's, a, he's an over-the-road truck driver now, but um, he has plenty of time to think about this design, and he's got the whole thing. He's got the whole thing, all these interlocking blocks that provide better strength, and he's got, he knows how to do the ones around the windows and doors and put channels in for the plumbing and electrical, and so we're helping him uh, make his way through the development cycle on that. Um, a downtown business owner, Brian Height, who saved thousands of dollars by making and installing his own exterior sign. And most people who know Brian would not say he has a self-confidence problem at all, <laughs> at all. But even he talks about the self-empowerment that he felt after, after doing that. Um, 90, and I just talked about this, 90-some middle middle school girls um, discovering that they really do like math and science, and many of them see a future that they didn't see before, uh, possibilities for a future that they didn't see before. Two full-time working women, I don't think they're here, April Whitson and Lori Rutland, who started using the Fab Lab, and then they decided they ought to be teaching other women how to use the Fab Lab, so they formed Fab Lab Divas and had all these classes, and their next Diva Day is on September 29th, so I'm thinking we can get you information on that, and that'll be a whole day of making and other and other stuff. And now they've gotten into it so much, they're still working full time, barely, but the jobs are starting to get in the way. They bought their own laser and their own printing equipment, and so they do a lot of custom design work on, on clothing and, and cups and things, internet sales and that kind of thing. So all that spawned from, from their starting work in the Fab Lab. And then finally, a farm mom, uh, Danielle Passeur, who really uh, had a little just kind of hobby business of etching things the hard way. And uh, she fulfilled customer orders in our lab using our lasers for several months. And then she got so busy that she's remodeled a place in her home twice because the first one was too small and bought her own laser. And so she fulfills customer orders from her home. So 
we would like to have dozens more like those where they start out using things in the fab lab and are coaching or whatever you want to call it to get started and then get so busy that they move out and actually Danielle would like to have a store downtown someday so that would be good. So that's what um, some of the things that we have going and that's why that we say our mission is to do the self-empowerment thing and it actually feeds into the mission of the college really well which is about um, community enrichment and, and being for our students and, and economic development. We have that piece on the end. So uh, really happy to be here today. Come out to the grand opening. If you can't make it, get a hold of us and we'll be happy to show you around some other time. Sure. Thank you. We appreciate everything that you're, you're doing out at the Fab Lab. It's amazing. I was just at Celebrate yesterday, and I was visiting with a lady who's relocated to a new, uh, new store area on Myrtle, and she was talking about getting her signage from her corporate office, and she said, I think I'm just going to tell them, forget it. I can do it at the Fab Lab. So that was, that was cool. All right, so we're ready for our next speaker. She is no stranger to independence. Um, she's lived here forever. We went to high school together. And um, I'm excited to introduce her as the new general manager to Textron Aviation. Would you please welcome our hometown girl, Paula Schauble. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. So I know a lot of familiar faces in the crowd, but those of you that do not know me, I am Paula Schauble, and I am born and raised in Independence. Um, I went to IHS, graduated in 1993, so you can do the math on how old I am. Um, some of the things I'd like to talk about is I started what I still call my career downtown independence, uh, working at DeFever Osborne as the uh, pharmacy tech and worked behind the soda fountain. Um, and then after graduation of high school, I then went to go work for Larry Pendleton at the Independence Financial Center, which I'm sure a lot of you know him, and also worked at the Teachers Credit Union for Linda Trowski. So with those experiences, I was able to get a job at Textron Aviation in the actual credit union when it first opened out in 1996. So with that experience, I worked in the credit union for a, a little over a year. And then with my accounting experience, I was able to uh, move into the finance department in 1997. So while I worked at the Teachers Credit Union and Financial Center, I was getting my associate's degree out at good old ICC. So after that, um, I did commute back and forth to Pittsburgh, Kansas to get my business administration degree in emphasis in accounting in um, 1996. So from that, or 1997, sorry. So from there, I started my career. So I was in the finance department for a little over 19 years. So started down at the bottom as the accountant associate, moved up to senior accountant, business partner, and in 2016, I was promoted as accounting uh, manager. So I was responsible for all of the finance activities down in TAM, which is our Mexico facility, uh, Texture Aviation down in, in Chihuahua, Mexico. And I also supported um, Macaulay Props, which was in Columbus, Georgia. So needless to say, I was supporting this facility, the Georgia facility, and the TAM facility. So needless to say, I was doing a little bit of traveling. So from that, um, there was an opening for a VSM position under Carrie Peterson uh, last year, um, I believe in May, and it took her probably three to four months of tapping me on my shoulder to convince me to apply for that job. So I finally took the plunge and I moved from finance over to operations. So from there, I stayed there for about a year and then she left to uh, pursue, uh, be, well, she was actually promoted to the facility in Wichita. So she's over production in the Wichita facility and here I am. So just a little bit about um, our company. Um, in 2016, we did celebrate our 20th anniversary of the manufacturing facility here in Independence. We currently employ over 500 people. Um, which produces six of the company's 22 models, uh, which, in, which is the M2 jet, which I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, uh, the single engine high wing aircraft, which is a Skyhawk, a Skylane, and a stationaire. And then recently we were awarded uh, the privilege of producing the Cessna Caravan and Grand Caravan. So let's talk about the Grand Caravan. So we brought that down last year. Um, 
I believe the middle of July, and we have been producing that aircraft since. Um, last year, we delivered not just this facility, but Wichita in 2017 delivered 70 aircraft. Uh, it is produced more than it has been produced more than 35 years and is known for the dependable and efficiency performance by regional airlines, charter operators, and cargo carriers worldwide. So the great thing about the caravan is it has lots of options, lots of interiors, so it's, it can be utilized in numerous ways. Um, with the great products that we build, we have great people. So if it's not for the people, we wouldn't be here where we are today. So we are committed to providing meaningful opportunities to our employees. So we provide the training and the skill sets for those employees when they hit the floor. So um, if you don't know anything about sheet metal and you want to apply, come on out. You go through a four-week training, and then also once you hit the floor, we have some uh, on-the-job trainers that will be out helping those individuals learn their, their roles and responsibilities. But, uh, but also with that, though, um, we have a lot of individuals that come out of high school sometimes that can't afford college, and so they're able to get tuition assistance, so we actually will pay for them to go back to school, which is typically online, online or night school. So it's a great opportunity for them. Uh, the company is hiring for both professional and direct manufacturing positions, both in the Wichita and Independence facilities. Uh, primarily, the openings today at our facility um, are in the paint department. You don't have to be a painter to work in the paint department. Um, A&P mechanics and avionics. So with that, what our future holds is we would like to um, continue with supporting the Independence High School. Um, we'd like to... Uh, Let's see, we're, what do I want to say? We're trying to get a partnership going with them to get us out there so the high school students that are graduating know that there are opportunities here in Independence, Kansas, just not everywhere else in the world, that there is manufacturing here. Um, we know that there's a tightening labor market both locally and nationally for the manufacturing. Um, combination of factors are contributing to the increased need for the skilled employees. Uh, low unemployment rates, the manufacturing sector's projected growth, uh, the competition for the skilled workers, percentage of retirement, eligible employees on the rise, and fewer youth are choosing those manufacturing careers. So with that, Textron Aviation is looking at these trends and are committed to increasing our engagement with students, parents, educators, and others to show that there are opportunities available in this industry. Uh, we are expanding our high school and college internship opportunities, including a new program with the Silver Air Patrol. I believe our interns came this summer, and I believe and spoke at First Friday. Um, but I'd like everyone in this room to know also that if you know of any sophomore, junior, or senior college students, they are able to apply for internships not only here but also in Wichita at uh, textronjobs.com. So um, if you know of anybody that would like to try to internship, they can go out and apply for those. And I would say um, it should be showing up either this month or next month. So just have them watch online because it'll show up eventually. Um, this year, Textron Aviation partnered with the Wichita Public Schools, uh, WSU Tech, and Kansas Department of Education to launch a new aviation pathway, which is in addition to the Kansas Department of Education Career and Technical Education, also known as CTE. Uh, in the high school curriculum, and we were actually just on site uh, with Rusty's team this week to discuss putting that in our school systems next year. So we're really hoping we can get that started. Um, with that, the Aviation Pathway is a priority uh, to part of the comprehensive effort to inspire youth to explore careers in advanced manufacturing and to build a pipeline of future talent for the state's largest industry. Uh, we're here to be a resource for students seeking shadowing and internship opportunities and a resource for teachers and counselors wanting to look at what aviation means and looks like today. The bottom line is we want to see students and educators at our facility and we want them to see text on aviation visible in our schools as well. So in closing, uh, the aviation industry has provided me an excellent opportunity to serve as GM of this independence facility and it's a good time to be working in aviation, and I look forward to the future of TA here at Independence. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations. We're excited for you. So I've served with Paula. She's helped us with the Chamber First Leadership Group for years. She served on the board. It's exciting to see your connection with the school district, and um, 
We look forward to having you come back to First Friday and keep us well informed of everything that's happening south of town. So, All right, so we're ready for our last two speakers. They're going to do this in tandem, kind of, or one right after the other, probably. But um, the subject matter is the same. It's all about education. Um, I heard our superintendent speak the other day at a small gathering, and he, he touched on um, about six really interesting and important things that I thought, you know what, I think a bigger audience needs to hear him speak. So I sent him an email and got him on the first leaders or the first Friday roster. And so here he is, our superintendent. Please welcome Rusty Arnold. Good morning and thanks for the opportunity to speak today, Lisa. She she did see me at the Optimus Club talking and when she did uh, I had about 45 minutes there, and she's kind of limiting me. So I don't know that I'll get to all six, but if you have any questions or anything, I'll stick around afterwards. I'll be more than happy to answer anything, even if it's subjects I have not touched upon. Please feel free to stick around. Early in the morning, I typically go into my office so that I can answer emails and do some things before the phone starts ringing and texting, and you saw me get up and leave earlier. It starts early, and it stays late. Last night, we had a lot of help from the Independence PD, and I want to thank them for that. We had a uh, potential threat of a school shooting today in our high school. But when we got to the text and the IPD started investigating, within about an hour, we found out that was actually Glendale, Arizona, that had Independence High School, and they had made arrests two days earlier. But it took that long to get to Kansas. So we're excited that it had nothing to do with us. And we're certainly glad that they were able to find that out and get that information to us quickly last night. So we do appreciate your efforts on that, uh, Independence PD, Jerry Harrison. Um, one of the things this morning that I saw was uh, the Kansas State Fair. I don't know how many of you ever go to the Kansas State Fair, but I absolutely love going to that every year. And the theme of that is find your fun. And I got to thinking, you know, that is a great theme for Independence, Kansas. Because I think of all the things that I do in Independence, my grandkids come down here and do an Independence, it's a great place to find your fun. So I hope this weekend that all of you here today will go out and find your fun, whatever that may be. Uh, start with a breakfast with the Optimus Club. There's not a more energetic and positive group of people you could start with. And maybe you get in that right frame of mind to find your fun this weekend and always here in Independence. One of the things that we're really excited about in the schools this year is we have opened a preschool. It's called Riley Early Learning Center. It is just south of the high school. And when we opened that, we invited in Tri-County Special Education, and we have four classrooms within that facility now. Those four classrooms, we have two in which we serve general ed population, and then we have two in which we serve special education population and a mix of some general ed population kids. We have a total of about 102 kids in there right now, Capacity would be 120, but due to some of the situations the kids have, we don't want it to be at capacity at this time. Uh, we're not quite ready yet. But that's a lot more than we had anticipated being there. We were hoping that if we got 60 to 70 kids this year, great year. Well, we've got 102. 31 of those are three-year-olds. Uh, the other 71 are four-year-olds. And as we contacted the private schools in town, they are also um, with kids, and those kids that they have is 36 four-year-olds. So if you add those up, if my math is right, we should be serving about 107 four-year-olds. And if you remember, the goal of this preschool was that we serve throughout our community, whether it's private or public, all kids that need to go to preschool as four-year-olds. That would be typically about 160 kids in our district coming into a kindergarten class. So we didn't get there. There's still kids out there. And if you know of any, please either send them to the private schools. Uh, I know they have scholarships available and other things if they need help with that. But, and I'm not, I don't want to say that for the private schools and then they get mad at me. I'm not, but there is openings in both facilities. And please, if you know any kids that are four-year-olds, we would love to have them join either a private or a public preschool, uh, so that they are ready for kindergarten. As we have said across the state of Kansas, one of the goals in uh, the new Kansas vision of education, Kansas can, is kindergarten readiness. So we still have out there about 50 to 54 kids that we would love to see attend a preschool somewhere. 
If you ever want to see the preschool, give me a call. I'd be happy to show you around. Um, it's a lot brighter colors than what used to be in there. Uh, it came out excellent. It's a great facility. Um, I could tell you all kinds of stories. I had two board members, Charles Barker and Marty Richenberger, said, first day of school, let's go out and let's shake hands with kids. So, okay, great. So we started at Jefferson, and we started welcoming kids as they came in. And then they go, well, let's go buy our new preschool. And I said, eh, wait a minute. First day of preschool is not a good day. <laughs> a lot of crying on the parents' part, a lot of crying on the kids' part. But, but they're troopers, and they said, let's go. So we go in, and we, we enter the first uh, general ed classroom. And Charles sees a little boy over there on the floor just wailing away. And so Charles gets down on the floor with him and is talking him through it and gets him calmed down. Well, then another one over there starts wailing away. And <laughs> he's hitting on the table, and the teacher feels terrible. I mean, here's two board members, superintendent of schools, day one, standing in her classroom. She's, you can tell she's fidgety as all get out. <laughs> And so she decides, well, she's going to go over there and comfort this young man that's having troubles. And so she goes over and she uh, puts her arms around him and he jerked away from her and said, I done told you, lady, I just want my mom and dad to hug me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of fun there. We've still got some biters and we're working on the biting. Um, but we did have some biters yesterday. Um, those are always fun calls. We've got another teacher bitten. Okay, hairs get bitten. So, uh, we're, but we're getting them there. And this is, this is what, I mean, in, in all fun and games, it is fun and it's hilarious to watch them. The stories we can tell with preschoolers, we had one, we've got an orange fence because we don't have grass growing on our playground yet. So we wanted them to stay off there. And it's been raining, so it was muddier and all get out. And turn your head for two seconds and they're gone. So we had one go under the fence, is rolling around in a mud puddle, having a whale of a time. We get her inside the bathroom, and I got a picture of her, and it was the cutest thing in the world. She's still having a good time when we're trying to clean her up. So they're a lot of fun, but, but that's why we have the preschool, in, in all honesty, is to get them ready for kindergarten so we don't have these situations when they actually get into Eisenhower Elementary School. But if you ever want to see it, give me a call. I'd be happy to tour you with that. Our district enrollment this year, we think we're up just a little bit. We won't really know that until September 20th. We have... Uh, count day that day and kids have to be in attendance prior to September 20th and one day after September 20th for us to be able to get any funding at all for them. So that's kind of how that funding formula works. But right now we're looking at K-12. We have about 2,008 students. So we've bumped up over the 2,000 mark. I'm very excited about that. Uh, we're looking forward to a great year with all those kids. Um, one of the things that we're doing right now in an effort to save some money, is we are going to transition our transportation from Durham, uh, transportation services, to the district. And the reason we're doing that, twofold, one, I think we should keep the money as local as possible, and I have trouble sending 680000 this year to California, so I have a little difficulty with that, number one. And number two, I think we can do it cheaper and better. And so that's why we're going to do that, and the way it's going to look is during this transition, what will happen is we will buy approximately 16 buses, um, maybe a couple used ones for spares, but 16 new buses. One of those will be an activity bus. We're going to paint it up orange and put bulldogs on it, and uh, we're going to go in style when we go. Hopefully it will intimidate people. We'll put a mean bulldog on it. Um, we need a little help right now intimidating on the football team, but <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Um, come out and support them tonight at Labette. But, uh, so, so we're going to do that, and, and on that one, the state of Kansas reimburses 87.5% on school buses. It's called depreciation. So we're going to get 87.5% of whatever we pay for those buses back to us over an eight-year period. So we're going to purchase those on a lease purchase. We're going to use that money being reimbursed at 12.5% a year to actually pay off that lease purchase. Um, so that's how we're going to do that. The only one that we can't get reimbursement on is, a transfer, is the um, activities bus. We have to purchase an activities bus because they know we have activities. So the state requires us to buy at least one activity bus. And so we're going to buy an activity bus, and that will be the only one that we'll get absolutely no reimbursement on uh, whatsoever. But we're excited about that. Uh, overall, the cost savings that we think we can do if we give raises to the current employees, we want to keep all of them in our community. Um, we feel like by giving them all raises 
and buying our own buses and things, that after our facility is paid for, which will be part of the lease purchase, we'll save about a quarter million to $300,000 a year. And that estimate came from KSDE. Uh, well, I've been over it a couple times with them. We really believe we'll save that. While we're paying the lease purchase off the first eight years, we feel like we're going to save about $100,000 a year because part of our money savings will have to go to pay off our facility for our buses and transportation. We've got a lot of spots we're looking at. Uh, the board hopefully will make a decision on that tonight where they're actually going to put that facility. Um, we, we've got a lot of locations. We don't want to put it in an urban area. April would be all over me. Uh, if I put that next to a housing development or something, 16 buses at 6 in the morning with 25 people coming into work, she's not going to be happy with me. So we're looking on the edge of town is where we're trying to put it so that it doesn't um, interfere with the daily lives of everyone else that doesn't have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning uh, and don't want to listen to buses. So that's our transportation transition, what we're working on. That will actually be completed by July 1 of 2019. So we are still with Durham the remainder of this year, and then we'll actually take it over next year. Because it, buses are about six months out. So if we ordered buses today, we wouldn't be able to get delivery for a minimum of four to six months. So it's a long process to do this. It's not like just call them up and say, hey, bring me 16 new buses. Uh, it's not going to work that way. We, it, it takes some time. And so we're in that process of transitioning now. Uh, one of the other things, we still have two positions open within our district. We have a counseling position open, and we have a functional classroom in the middle school open. We filled them with substitutes uh, or people that have degrees that are similar, and so we've got capable people in those positions, and we're very proud that they were stepped up and took those positions because they're both retirees that have come back to help us, and we appreciate that, and we truly appreciate their experience being back in our schools. But one of the things that we know we have to do is we have to start growing our own. We have to grow our own kids to come back to Independence and teach and make a living in town if they can do that. And we feel like the school has great opportunities for kids to come back uh, and stay here, make a living. As Greg said earlier, it, this is a great place to raise a family. We have great schools. We have great parks. We have great support from the community. And, and maybe you, I'm overusing that word great, but I truly mean that. It's great here in Independence. And I think if we can encourage kids to come back, we're talking to teachers about tell kids they need to be a teacher. And I've harped on this before. But I think Paula could be our poster child for Grow Your Own. I mean, she has come up through the ranks and done an absolutely fantastic job and is doing well for herself. And our kids need to see that you can do that. It takes some hard work. I'm not going to kid them, but they can do it. And that's what we want to encourage our kids to do. Stay home because our county, I think uh, Ray Woods, I heard him the other night say that we're down to under 10,000 and getting smaller. Isn't that what you said, Ray? Yeah. Um, so we, we want to reverse that if we can uh, and, and make it better. But we want our kids to stick around and teach. Um, textile and aviation. Paula had hinted on that we're in a cooperative agreement or we're starting one. No, I feel like we're in it uh, big time. We're committed. I certainly know Paula's committed to our high school and what we want to do. But with that, a new curriculum, it's, it's a vocational curriculum. We're offering some pathways as our plan starting next year. But a lot of things have to be put in place. We need the community colleges to get involved in that because some of those courses will need to be community college courses. So we've got a lot of work that we're working on now behind the scenes. But Paula has certainly been very instrumental in this, and I think she'll continue to be instrumental. And it's another way that we want to grow our own here in town to fill the jobs we have so people will stay and raise families here in Independence, Kansas. Um, middle school be my final subject. Middle school reformation, transformation. I don't know what you want to call it, but our middle school was having some issues with some discipline in the past couple years. Um, kids were failing classes, and we had a no-fail policy. And so a student could fail all their core subjects. And our core subjects that we identify are science, social science, math, and ELA, English language, or English. Um, those are the four core subjects that we expect every kid to pass if they want to continue moving on in, in our school system. 
because what we found is we would have kids fail every class, core subject, and they'd move to the next grade, and then they'd do it again, and then they'd do it again, and then they'd get to high school and go, this is hard. I don't know what I'm doing. You think? <laughs> and so they would drop out. So our dropout rate is about 90, we're at 90 percent graduation, so about 10 percent. Now, statewide, that's not bad, but it's bad for Independence, Kansas. Our kids can do better, and we're going to expect them to do better. And so what the board has done is we have said, if you fail two core subjects, you're going to repeat the grade. Now, we're going to give you opportunities to pass those. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we offer academic assistance required if you're failing a core subject. So we're going to get them in. We're going to help them. And then if you still fail two of them, we're going to have you come to summer school four weeks. And if you come to summer school and you try and the summer school teacher thinks you're ready, then we'll pass you on the next grade level. But we've got to get kids prepared for the next level. If we don't do that, shame on us. We're the reason they dropped out. And I do not want to be the reason any kid drops out of school ever. And so a little down comfort on their part now. We're going to get them to where they need to be so that they have the skills to pass those classes in the high school because the high school is a different place, and when they get up there, they fail them, and you take it over. And so some of them go two years of doing that, and they go, I'm just, I just can't do this stuff. Well, it's because you haven't done it for three years. And so, well, it's, and that's one of the biggest transformations is in the grade. The other is the discipline system. We went back to a point system. It was a point system similar to what we had years ago here. Um, Cherryville uses almost identical point system to what we're using. Um, so it, it's a thing that's being used in the area, and we're expecting our kids to come in, be respectful, and try to learn, and that's what we're wanting to do with, for our kids. I think it's a, a great transformation that's taking place there. If you ever want to go through and see and talk about it or see the handbook, give me a call. I'm proud of our schools. I'll show you around anytime you want to go. Just give me a call. My cell number's out there everywhere. I'll give it to you again. Lisa can give it to you. But one of the things that we're really proud about, I'm going to shut up because I know I'm talking too long, but really, take some time. Find your fun here in Independence. I think we have great places to visit, things to do here, and please find your fun. With no further ado, though, I want to introduce our new ag instructor. We started an ag program a couple years ago. We started at halftime, and we thought, you know, if we get 30, 40 kids involved, this is going to be really cool. Well, we actually had that first year 68 kids get involved. So, well, can't do it half time anymore. We need a teacher. So uh, we hired Michaela LaRue. Michaela comes to us from Erie, Kansas. Michaela's been involved in FFA. She's been involved in 4-H. Uh, she comes from a great farm family over in that area. I first met Michaela when she was in a student assistant to the Allen County Community College Endowment Director. Uh, I was president of that organization at that time for several years. So I got the privilege to work with Michaela. She was a great kid, hardworking kid. And so when I saw she had applied, I was like, wow, I know that girl and she's good. So we're very excited to have Michaela and I'll let her talk about her new program and how that's going here in Independence. Thank you for your time. Thank you for Good morning. Um, I honestly can't outdo that introduction of myself, but it is true. I met Mr. Arnold when I was a student at Allen County Community College after I graduated from Erie High School. I also competed on the livestock judging team. I was probably honestly gone more out of that office than I was there because one time he's like, oh, hey, you are actually still working here. I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> so um, after Allen County Community College, I transferred up to Kansas State University where I did graduate in ag education. And then I applied at several schools in Independence. I was like, OK, I've been to this town. My mom would bring me to Dairy Queen and go out to the park. I'm like, I, I know this town a little bit. 
Um, I'm pretty good friends with the ag teachers at Cherryville, and I was talking to Amy Allen, maybe many of you know this about the position. She's like, if anything, just go and try. You know, you need to go fill out the school, and I was nervous, just like maybe how I still am today in front of <laughs> speaking in front of new people. However, um, that office, I was sitting, and I'm like, okay, I know I'll talk to admin, like play it cool, Michaela, like you got this, just talk, you know, don't ramble. And what really stuck out about IHS is every single person that came into that high school office acknowledged me. I'll be honest, I interviewed at five other schools and that didn't happen at other schools. The secretaries, the office assistants, the other teachers that were just trying to check their mailbox. Like they would come in, some of them gave me that head nod of, it's okay kid, they just ate lunch, they're not gonna eat you. <laughs> And that made me feel a little bit better. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. So, and um, needless to say, they gave me that phone call and I was like, awesome, yeah. I have a job. I can do what I am passionate about and what I went to school for. And I'm originally from the SEK area. I wanted to come back. I moved down that summer and this is my second year at the high school. Last spring, I had 70 kids in the program, students, sorry, they sometimes get a little bit cranky if I call them kids, but I ended with 70 in May, and this year, I have about a 16, 17% increase at 85 students within the program. So I thought that was awesome. I was very excited. I'm like, I didn't decrease, so cool. <laughs> I didn't run too many off, which I honestly have. I'm like, when you come in my classroom, you will think and you will work. If you have problems with that, try to find another elective. Some of them do. Some of them's like, all right, this is a challenge. I'm like, cool, let's work together. Um, the classes that I do offer and teach is Introduction to Agriculture. It's uh, the first basic that is typically offered for freshmen. However, since this is a new program, I have freshmen to seniors. It is honestly a little bit chaotic some days if you come and visit. <laughs> I swear, I do have management tactics. I do put them at use. But in this particular class, I'm just trying to showcase what agriculture is. And any of you that has been around agriculture, worked in agriculture, you know it's this and that and the other. So we first start off with what is agriculture, the basics. I do introduce the FFA and SAE components as well. And we actually just moved on to soil science because everything starts from the ground up. We cover agriculture sales, how to sell yourself as a rep, but then also maybe even a product. We go into communications. I've had children cry because they are so scared to public speak. I was like, listen, it doesn't matter what career you go into, you're going to have to talk. <laughs> so let's start this right now. <laughs> Other classes that I offer are animal science and advanced animal science this year. They both count for elective and science credits. And last year, I also taught ag communications and leadership, simply how to be a leader, but especially emphasizing the agriculture component. Because less than 2% of the American population actually work with production agriculture. So those are directly your farmers and ranchers, which I come from that and we still raise commercial cattle to this day. However, on the flip side, close to 50% of the American population work in agribusiness. That's your transportation, such as Cessna and Textron. That is your marketing and sales. Just because you might be in an office and never step foot on a farm doesn't mean you don't work in agriculture. My biggest goal is to showcase and have kids become educated consumers. We have a lot of controversial topics. We have classroom discussions that more turn into brawls <laughs> some days. But I'm trying to teach them it's OK to agree to disagree. And that is a valuable um, gift that, sadly, in today's society, we really don't have. So it's like we can have our own opinions, but you better know what you're believing in and stand by it. Besides. Um, the program itself, I'm also the FFA advisor because FFA is the Agricultural Education Student Organization that's been around since 1928. 
It is the one of the largest and also strongest student organizations that has been around a very, very long time. And we have such a strong foundation, we're able to continue that. Last year, we had a membership right at 33, 34 students that were members, and this year we don't have membership um, nailed down yet because that's due at the end of the month, but we're looking right around 40 this year. Um, through that, it's more leadership opportunities. They can become a chapter officer. Um, they can go to career development events, which is the official name for FFA contests, where they can be competitive. I'm a big advocate for the contest because besides athletes, I played sports when I was in school, and this allows for other skills to be used. For example, there's horse meats, livestock judging. That's when they have to evaluate different species, make a decision, stand by that decision, and then give oral reasons to a perfect stranger that always looks scary and intimidating. <laughs> there are students that love to place classes. They like to have those four horses or cattle or pigs, whatever it is, and they love to make that decision. They're like, I know it's right, and I have that confidence. But then when it's time to speak, that confidence starts to dwindle. So that's the part that I'm like, nope, that's only half of it. You got to do the other half. Um, other contests that we do, public speaking, extemporaneous, prepared speech, food science is very popular. It's more of a modern um, agribusiness management. It's a lot of farm math with finances. Honestly, I have kids that look at this and they're like, oh my gosh, you spend this much? I'm like, yeah, that's just in a, you know, one planting season. That's not even the rest of the year. So it's very eye-opening as well. Other aspects that we work on is community service. The NR NRCS office hosts a water festival at the end of the month and we helped with last year. There was over 300 fourth graders at that one event. We also help at the Earth Day event at Labette County Community College in the spring where uh, multiple county farm bureaus come together and host this event. And there's again over 400 elementary students. So just between those two, places, we help teach around 800 elementary kids on what agriculture is and how we're trying to advocate for that, how to show you where your food, fiber, and fuel comes from. Future goals that we're trying to strive is to get more enrollment with our students and the high school population. Honestly, we still go to contests and other events, and it's like, who's independent? Independence has an FFA chapter. They have ag. Yes, we do. We're still trying to make our name known. And I'm proud to say last year when the kids really get into it, and as a team of four, girls and boys, our dairy cattle team actually brought home our first hardware. We placed third at district. <laughs> And then they went on to state, and we had one of my juniors, who's now a senior, he medaled sixth at state, and I almost passed out in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I had other advisors texting me, making sure I was still upright. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was a rush. But the thing was, they still learned his public speaking so much better, and he's already advocated, you know what, I might never see a dairy cow in my life again, but I can use those skills. So that's what I'm really going after. Also, Envirothon that NRCS um, and Conservation puts on. We went just trying to compete a little bit, trying to get our ground underneath our feet, and one of our teams actually won regional. <laughs> and then we went on to state, and we placed 12th out of 16th. So as a first-year advisor and teacher, I was ecstatic, but that gave the kids more fire and more of a want and a need to go back and kick some more butt. So that's what I'm really about. Um, other ways that I'm trying to get more community support, because everybody I've talked to has been very, very helpful, very, very supportive. I have parents that literally be like, I need a shirt. They would probably rip it off and just give it to you, which is amazing. And I really, really appreciate that. There's a couple different programs that we have. Um, we have chapter t-shirts, and you can become a gold level or a blue level sponsor. If you become a gold level sponsor, we put your name or business name on the back. Then also there's the gift, Give the Gift of Blue program. We are the people that wear the corduroy blue jackets. 
with the FFA emblem on the back. I teach the kids, your name is the smallest print on that jacket because you're one person. Notice on the back, it's your chapter name, your state, and the organization because you're representing something bigger than yourself. So through the, gift, the uh, Give the Gift of Blue program, you're able to sponsor or give the gift of blue through an official FFA jacket. When we have a chapter banquet at the end of every year, that is our highlight ceremony, so to speak, to showcase what all the kids have done, their accomplishments, their achievements. We have the kids public speak. It's, it's awesome. It's honestly my favorite part. And I was proud to say it was difficult, but every single member that attended was in official dress. They look sharp, and honestly, nowadays, I tell the kids, people don't know how to dress up like they used to. It's not going to kill you to learn how to iron slacks and tie a tie. <laughs> Trust me, I've taught others, and nobody has died yet. It's okay. <laughs> um, the third program that we've implemented is the Wix filter box top program. If you ever use a Wix oil filter, uh, please cut off that back box top and you can drop it off at the high school or Riley's Auto Parts. Uh, every box top that we collect and submit, we actually get a quarter for. And that comes directly back into our FFA account and just helps for um, traveling expenses, trying to get registration for the contest. I try to purchase food for the kids so they don't have to worry about that because I have several kids that they want to join FFA and our dues are $20 ahead. And they're like, Miss Lou, I can't pay that. I'm like, you know what? We're going to set up a payment system because my car, I did not pay for that all out of pocket, and I have payments too. <laughs> so needless to say, there is a need financially with the social economic that we do have in this community. But I'm trying to show them more. It's just not about the money. You have something to give because you're an asset. But I really appreciate all of you allowing me to speak this morning, and I hope... Um, if you have any interest in this, I'm a contact, and if you need anything, try to find the kids in the blue jackets or the talkative advisor. That's probably being mean, but thank you. <laughs> Good job. Mandy and I met Michaela when she and her mom came to town. You were interviewing for the job, and she was looking for a place to live, and so now it's Nice to see you all gainfully employed, and Rusty, you made a great hire. I think she's perfect for the job. Well, we're going to wrap it up. We always have some shout-outs um, at the end, and then I've got a few other things that I want to remind you about. So I'm going to have Rob Morgan come up here. Dave Harson, you want to talk Cancer Center um, raffle tickets? And Barb Burskins, we've got a birthday party. And anybody else? Rob, come on up here. Right here. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Come and get in line. Go ahead. Um, I'm here for two organizations. First is the art gallery. Um, we have some cards and some flyers over there. Uh, we're looking for artists. Anybody knows any great artists that want to display their art, sell their art, have them come see us at the art gallery. Um, the second thing I want to bring up is um, we do have sponsorships to help keep our doors open. Um, they, uh, we have several levels of sponsorship, so if you want to sponsor the art gallery, just come see the, somebody at the art gallery. <clears throat> and then we have our September classes coming up. If you want to take any classes, um, there's a flyer over there. Just come see us. Um, some of our members are here. Gene's a member. Um, anybody else? I don't see anybody else. And then the next organization I want to talk about is the Montgomery County Conservation District, not NRCS. They're our partner. Um, we... Uh, have an upcoming water festival, and we have 420 fourth graders coming to the 4-H buildings out here in Montgomery, out the Riverside Park on September 18th. So we're always looking for volunteers who want to come help. That is a lot of kids to deal with in one day. Mm -hmm. um, this will be our second year to have that um, water festival, and it was a huge success last year, and we're hoping to have that same success this year. Um, it is September 18th. If you want to volunteer, come see me out at the Ag Center out at, across from Marshlands. Um, and another thing we have coming in October is we're bringing the Earth, Earth Balloon in Montgomery County, and we're going to be at all the grade schools in Montgomery County through the Conservation District. So um, we always need volunteers for that too. So <laughs> um, come see me if you want to volunteer for any of those things. Um, 
And that's all I got. Okay, come on up, Tricia. Don't be shy. We got a long line. Come on, get up here. Okay, I'll go fast. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that if you're not aware of it already, on September 20th, uh, the Kansas legislature established the Joint Transportation Task Force, and they're having regional transportation meetings that will determine KDOT funding for at least the next five years. So if you want to see your highways improved, especially 169, where we've had so many fatalities, especially here um, just outside of Independence, um, please make an attempt to come. The more people that attend this session, the more that that, that Joint Transportation Task Force pays attention. That was very clear when they did this several years ago back in Iola. Um, 69 Highway was done purely because they had 50 dots on 69 Highway. So I strongly encourage anyone to write letters of support. Um, you can submit them um, via my office and I can help you get that done. Um, but it starts at 10 a.m. in Pittsburgh at their student union ballroom. We are providing transportation if someone doesn't, can't, have a, uh, can't get there. Um, Coffeeville Community College has volunteered their athletic bus uh, to take people who, who might not be able to make it. We'll all meet at the rest stop um, at the 400 junction um, and uh, we'll load up the bus about 8 a.m. on September 20th and head to Pittsburgh. So it's kind of an all-day event though. It's from 10 to 3. We get to give testimony from 12.30 to uh, 2. So, um, and then we'll have some comment periods from the Joint Legislative Trust Force. So if you're interested in getting your highways fixed, please, please make an attempt to come. And all the information's on my website as well, actioncouncil.com. Thank Thanks. you. Hi, I'd like to invite you on Friday, September 14th to the park. We're gonna celebrate the Stitch uh, Shelter House's 100th birthday. Uh, in 1918, uh, the city was given the shelter house in July. Uh, we weren't able to get the shelter house at that time, so we're celebrating in September, cooler weather. It's a Friday night. It starts at 6 o'clock, and we're going to kind of uh, duplicate the, the program that was given at that time, and uh, then we'll have an ice cream social. We also celebrated 65 years of the train, and so we're giving away free. You can come and ride the train for free. So come out Friday night at 6 o'clock, September 14th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lisa. I wasn't uh -huh. going to say anything, but since you twisted You go right ahead. Uh, my, I've got a lot of fellow Rotarians in the room. They've already heard this, and they're going to hear it again today at lunch if they're, if they're going to be here today. But Atmos Energy has donated six club-level tickets and a parking pass for the Chiefs Raiders. And if anybody's a Chiefs fan in here, they've got to hate the Raiders, right? <laughs> We're selling chances to win those tickets. I'm not selling tickets. I'm selling a chance to win the tickets. They're $20 a piece or three for $50. And if you want some, please see me or Lisa or Mandy have mm -hmm. them at the chamber office. The th reason I want to mention this again is because that money is going to the uh, Cancer Center of Kansas. It's going to be local. Uh, Valerie Davis is going to take that money and they're going to do something at the local facility. And I can't remember exactly what you, some sort of a water feature mm -hmm. or a kind of a meditation feature outside at the facility because people are in there for hours getting treatment. Mm -hmm. And this money's all going to go, and we're hoping to raise a couple thousand dollars to be able to donate to them for that. So it's a great uh, cause, even if you're not a football fan, you know, please buy some tickets. Thank you. Good. And you're right. We have the tickets at the chamber office. And I just wanted to let everybody know that on September the 21st, the health fair will be right here uh, in the Civic Center. That's open to everybody. We'll be doing lab work if you need to get that done. Uh, there will be lots of vendors, and if you want to be a vendor, then uh, catch up with me afterwards, and I can help you with that. And uh, we hope everybody turns out. There's lots of activities and things going on that day also. It's from 7 in the morning until 1230. Thank you. Um, I'm Gary Morrison with Community National Bank. I wanted to give a shout out next Friday um, from 10 to 3 o'clock. We're going to have a shred day, so bring out your sensitive documents. We'll get those shredded for you. Jim and I are going to have a contest to see who can haul more boxes. I have a feeling he's going to beat me, but anyway. Um, and then the, right after that, we're also going to start at 11 o'clock. We'll have lunch for everybody from 11 to 1. So stop by, drive through the alley, please drive slow, drop your boxes off, and maybe we'll get you lunch from 11 to 1 o'clock. And then that next Saturday, September the 22nd, I wanted to give a shout out to the Southeast Kids Have Talent or Have a Talent Show. 
please, please, please get those talented kids. And I know what you guys have at home. Get them to come out and join us. It's a really laid back affair, but we do try to showcase the kids' talents and get them uh, a little bit of experience uh, out in the public. So please uh, p uh, go to the Independent Science and Technology Center, pick up an application there, or come down and see me at the bank and I'll get you an application for your kids, okay? Thank you. We will have free flu shots again this year. It's on October the 13th. That's the second Saturday. It's at the Oval from 9 to 12. And it's first come, first served. Oftentimes, we start a little early. We start as soon as we are ready. And we finish sometimes as early as 11. So free flu shots. And all you have to do is stick your arm out the window. <laughs> We take care of everything else. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I want to say our final congratulations to Brian and Ryan with Magnolia Sense by Design. Very much deserved. So congratulations again on that. Thanks to everybody in the green shirts and the purple shirt up front. Um, thank you for your sponsorship of First Friday, and thank you for your support of the Alzheimer's Association. Please sign up to be a team. Sign up to sponsor. Drop some money in over here if you want to, to donate just in general. Get your name in the drawing for some Oakley glasses. They're going to take care of you right over here um, on your way out. Mark your calendar for Friday, October the 5th. That will be our next first Friday. Thank you to our speakers. It's always great to hear from our college, what's going on in education with our school district, and always, always interesting to know what's going on at our major manufacturers and, and large and small businesses in our community. And remember to find your fun. <laughs>